Lesson 31 homework. Number one, estimate and then divide. An example has been done for you. They already did the first one, so let's go down to B, or A. So 61 and 6 tenths divided by 8 tenths. The first thing it wants us to do is estimate. So I'm going to make these into whole numbers um, by multiplying them each by 10, because they both end in ten the tenths place. So if I do that, I'll have 616 divided by 8. Now to estimate, I'm going to think of my math facts and things that I know I can divide by 8. And it starts with a 6, which makes me think of 64. Because I can do 64 divided by 8 is 8. But here I'm going to make 616. It's close to 640. So I'm going to say it's close to 640 divided by 8. And 640 divided by 8 would be equal to 80. So my estimate is 80. Now I want to actually divide. So to do that, I'm going to do 61 and 6 tenths. I'm going to multiply by 10 over 8 tenths times 10. And I'll get 616 divided by 8. And if I divide 616 divided by 8, 8 goes into 6 0 times. 8 goes into 61, we just saw 8 times 8 is 64, so it can only go in 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56, I'll subtract 61 minus 56 is 5, I'll bring down the 6, and 8 goes into 56 7 times, it's 56, nothing to bring down, so we get 77. So this is equal to 77. B. 5 and 74 hundredths divided by 7 tenths. So first we need to estimate. Again, I'm going to think about my facts. And I think that if I were to multiply these, I'm just going to make that into 7. And if I multiply that by 10, I'll have 57 and 4 tenths. So something around 57 divided by 7, um, I can do 56 divided by 7. So 56 divided by 7 is equal to 8. So my estimate is 8. If I actually divide 5 and 74 hundredths divided by 7 tenths, I'm going to multiply. Here, I only need to multiply by 10 because I just need to get the divisor to be a whole number, and I'll show you why in a second. So if I do that, I get what I had above, 57 4 tenths divided by 7. So if I divide 57 and 4 tenths divided by 7, I just need the divisor right here to be a whole number, because the decimal point, all it's going to do is come straight up. And it's easier to divide by 7 than divide by 70. So 7 goes into 5, 0 times, but 7 goes into 57, 8 times. 8 times 7 is 56. If I subtract, I get 14. 7 goes into 14 twice. 2 times 7 is 14, but no remainder. So my answer is equal to 8 and 2 tenths. Number 2, estimate and divide. So basically doing what we were doing above. 4 and 74 hundredths divided by 6 hundredths. Um, here I'm going to need to multiply by 100 to make it 474 divided by 6. So thinking of numbers that I can divide by 6 that are close to 47. Um, I can do 48 divided by 6. So I'm going to make it 480 divided by 6. 48 divided by 6 is 8, so 480 divided by 6 would be equal to 80. So 80 is my estimate. If I do 4 and 74 hundredths divided by 6 hundredths, I'll write it as a fraction. I'm going to need to multiply by 100 to get the divisor to be a whole number. So I'll have 474 divided by 6. 
And when I divide, 6 can't go into 4, but 6 can go into 47. Let's see, 6 times 8 was 48, so it can only go in 7 times. That's 42. Subtract and get 5. Bring down the 4. 6 can go into 54 9 times. 9 times 6 is 54. So no remainder, and our answer is 79, which is very close to our estimate of 80. And B. 19 and 44 hundredths divided by 54 hundredths. So again, I'm going to need to multiply by 100 to make those into whole numbers. And thinking of things that can be divided by 54 or something close to 54, 50 is really close to 54. And 1,944 is really close to 2,000. So I could do 2,000 divided by 50. And 2,000 divided by 50 is 40. So 40 is my estimate. And if I have 19 and 44 hundredths over 54 hundredths, again, I'm going to multiply by 100. And I'll get 1,944 divided by 54. So 54 can't go into 1, and it can't go into 19, but it could go into 194. Approximately, let's see what 54 times 3 is. 162. So one more time would be too big. It can go in 3 times, and that's 162. If I subtract, I get 32. I'll bring down the 4. So now when you see how many times 54 can go into 324. So 54 times 3 was 162. So let's try 54 maybe times 5 or 6. Let's try 5. It's 270. Let's add another 54 to that, so we have 6 times. Oh, 324, so it can go in 6 times, and that's 324. So our answer is 36, and 36 is close to our estimate of 40. Number 3. Solve using the standard algorithm. Use the thought bubble to show your thinking as you rename the divisor as a whole number. So they've used the thought bubble to show that they're moving one place, moving the decimal point one place, so that the divisor becomes a whole number. So all it needs us to do for this one is just do the long division. So 6 can't go into 3, but 6 could go into 38 6 times. 6 times 6 is 36. Subtract and get 2, bring down the 4. 6 can go into 24 4 times. 4 times 6 is 24. No remainder, so our answer is 64. 7 and 52 hundredths divided by 8 hundredths. So in our thought bubble, we're going to have 7 and 52 hundredths over 8 hundredths. And we need to move the decimal point two places here. So then we're moving it also two places here, which gets us 752 over 8. And if we do 752 divided by 8, 8 can't go into 7, but 8 can go into 75. Let's see, 8 times 8 is 64, 8 times 9 is 72. So it can go in 9 times. 8 can go into 32 4 times. So no remainder, our answer is 94. C, 12 and 45 hundredths divided by 5 tenths. So here we just need to move the divisor one place, which means we're going to move the dividend one place also and get 124 and 5 tenths over 5. So if we do that division problem, we're going to bring the decimal point straight up, and now we can just divide normally. So 5 can't go into 1, but it can go into 12 twice. 5 times 2 is 10. We get 2, bring down the 4. 5 goes into 24, 4 times. 
4 times 5 is 20. We get 4, bring down the 5. 5 goes into 45 9 times. 9 times 5 is 45. No remainder, so our answer is 24 and 9 tenths. And D, 5 and 6 tenths divided by 16 hundredths. So here we need to move two places. So we're also going to move two places here in the dividend, which will get us 560 over 16. And if we divide, 16 can't go into 5, but it could go into 56. Um, 6 times 4 is 64. 16 times 4 is 64, so 16 times 3 would be 48. If we subtract, we get 8 and bring down the 0. 16 can go into 80. Let's see, 16 times 5 is 80, so it can go in 5 times. 5 times 16 is 80, so our answer is 35. Number four, Lucia is making a 21 and 6 tenths centimeter beaded string to hang in the window. She decides to put a green bead every 4 tenths centimeters and a purple bead every 6 tenths centimeters. How many green beads and how many purple beads will she need? Okay, so green would be every 4 tenths centimeters. So we have 21 and 6 tenths divided by 4 tenths, because she's going to put one every single 4 tenths. So that would be equal to 21 and 6 tenths over 4 tenths. We need to multiply it by 10, so that the divisor is 4. We have 216 divided by 4. And when we actually divide, 4 goes into 21 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20 bring down the 6. 4 goes into 16 4 times. So we would have 54 green beads. And then purple is every 6 tenths centimeters. So we would have 21 and 6 tenths divided by 6 tenths. Or We need to multiply by 10. Six can't go into two, but it can go into 21 three times. Three times six is 18. If we subtract, we get three. Bring down the six. Six goes into 36 six times. Six times six is 36, so we would have 36 purple. And number five, a group of 14 friends collects 7 tenths pounds of blueberries and decides to make blueberry muffins. They put 5 tenths pounds of berries in each muffin. How many muffins can they make if they all use the blueberries they can, they use all the blueberries they collected? So it doesn't matter here that there's 14 friends. That information we don't need. But we do know they collect 7 tenths pounds and put 5 hundredths pounds in each muffin. So we're going to take those 7 tenths pounds and split them into groups of 5 tenths, 5 hundredths pounds. So we'll have 7 tenths over 5 hundredths. We're going to need to multiply by 100 to make these 5 hundredths into a whole number, or 5. 7 tenths times 100 is 70. So we have 70 divided by 5. 5 goes into 7 one time. 5 goes into 20 4 times. No remainder, so they can make 14 muffins.